let's go. The Phillies, they come back in the bottom of the ninth inning to win this ball game by a score of 6-3 to three on a Gene Segura walk-off three-run home run. After the Phillies blow this game in the ninth inning, which I will get to later, they come back, Franco ties it, and Segura walks it off. Really big game by the Phillies, a big win to get the four-game sweep out of the New York Mets. Oof. And I was at this ball game today, I sat in the Hall of Fame club, and thank God I was in the shade because it was really hot out, and the sun started creeping in during that bottom of the ninth inning, it was hitting my legs, and I was like, uh, thank God the sun wasn't hitting me the whole day because this sun is unbearable, and I hate the heat, and I'm still sweating from walking home. Ugh. It was just a hot one out there today. So, it was a pitching duel today by both Aaron Noah and Zach Wheeler, just... Just players, offense just couldn't get anything going off of both sides, and the pitchers were just dominating throughout. So Yeah, some pitchers, both pitchers, they had their innings where they threw a little bit too many pitches and they got out of jams, but still, through and through, it was a pitching duel through at least seven or six innings in this ball game. And Aaron Nola really stood out to me in this ball game because this game reminds me of the Aaron Nola we saw last year. Yeah, he had maybe like one or two innings when he his pitch count the pitch count was getting a little high and he was getting into a little jams, but he still managed to get out of it. As Aaron Nola, he goes seven innings strong, allows one hit and a walk and a hit batter, and he strikes out ten. Really solid outing by Aaron Nola today. Sadly, he doesn't get the win, even though the Phillies put him in the position to win this ball game, which I will get into later. Aaron Nola pitched a really great game and gave his team a chance to win. And for Zach Wheeler on the other side, a really strong outing for him. The Phillies really struggled to get anything going off of him. So he goes six innings, two hits, one earned run, and seven strikeouts with two walks. And just throughout the beginning of this ball game, and through at least the sixth inning, really no offense was able to get anything started up, get anything going. Like, the third inning, the Mets got something going, but they couldn't get any runs scored. Same thing with the Phillies. They got people on base, but they couldn't score any runs. And, yeah, it was just a really good pitching duel throughout at least six innings in this ballgame. But when we get to the bottom of the six for the Philadelphia Phillies, Bryce Harper, up the bat, he hits a solo bomb to left center field. It averages about 438 feet. It bounced onto the concourse. And the Phillies get a one nothing lead after seven innings. And Aaron Nola, he comes into the seventh inning. Like, actually, when the uh, sixth inning started, Aaron Nola had a no-hitter going into the sixth. But Zach Wheeler, of all people, got the first hit for the Mets. And, yeah, Aaron Nola, just with that style outing, had one hit. He got out of the seventh inning. And we go to the eighth inning when we have Juan Nicasio on the mound. He pitches a good, solid inning. He gets out of it. And then we get to the... Ninth inning, we bring out our closer, Hector Neris, who have be, we have been relying on all season to close out ball games for us, and he has done his job in the bullpen, getting those saves out of the bullpen. Only has one blown save this year, but this is his third appearance in the last three days, and it just looked like he didn't have it at all. It's just, in that ninth inning, he allows a ground out, and actually, not a ground out. He gets the first out of the ball of the inning. Then Michael Conforto he singles to right field, and then Todd Frazier comes up the bat. It's a three-two count. Throws the ball right down the middle, and Todd Frazier crushes the ball into the left field bleachers for a two-to-one Mets lead. And there's blown save number two for Hector Neris. <sighs> and it, when I was in the crowd, I was swearing like a sailor because that's how pissed I got. But then when I once I left the ball game today. I realized uh, Harris Neris just didn't have it today. He he was probably worn out for pitching so many days in a row. So, it's but still you have your closer out there and you expect him to go out and shut the game down. But today Hector Hector Neris just did not have it tonight, and it's sad to see. And the Mets they do eventually get another run on the board when JD Hammer comes into play. It's a it's a little chop ground ball, but there was really no use to let the run score because it was a really it was a chopper down the line and he had to get the out of first base and can't help the run scoring right there so it's a 3-1 Mets lead going into the bottom of the ninth for the Phillies and so we got Cesar Hernandez he is leading off he gets a walk and then we get the biggest at bat of the night from Michael Franco 
He's come up clutch in his series time in and time out, hitting home runs to give this team the lead. And what does Franco do on... Because this was amazing. He does it on an 0-2 count, actually. He was battling. He was swinging at every pitch, fouling off, finding his right pitch. And it was funny, too. I called this. I said right, I said right before Franco hit the home run, Franco, you have come up big in this series time and time again. It is another time for you to come up big, and I believe you can do it. And what does Franco do? Crushes the ball over the left field stands and... At first, no one knew if it was really a home run or not, but the umpire from third base, he was signaling home run right away. And it does take an umpire review to confirm that it is a home run. But from the replay, it hit the back fence of the left field side in the left field corner. And Franco ties this ball game. And <sighs> the whole ballpark was going crazy because at first, no one knew if it was a home run. They thought it was just it bounced off the wall and we got one run scored. But Franco ties the game right then and there. And... For, on the Mets standpoint, after the game was tied, there was still no one up in the bullpen. It was I think it took at least another batter for someone else to get in the bullpen for the Mets. And that was a really questionable decision to leave the guy in there. I think on the mound it was Diaz for the Mets. And they still still decided to keep him in there for some reason, which is a little mind-boggling. So after the Franco home run... JT Romito comes up pitching for Andrew Nepp. He strikes out, sadly. But then we got Sean Rodriguez, who battles and battles and battles in this at-bat, and he earns a much-deserved walk. And then you get Scott Kingery coming up. On an 0-2 count, he grabs out to the third baseman, but bobbles the ball, and it goes out into left field. Sean Rodriguez, he probably could have ran to third base, but I don't know if he misread the play right there because he thought the ball was caught at first. So... He thought about going to third, but he stood there at second base. So now we have two men on, first and second, for Scott Kingery. No, not Scott Kingery. He was the one that got the single. <laughs> two men on with one out for Gene Segura. He draws it to a one and two count. He's fouling off pitches. He's battling. He's battling. Like a lot of pit hitters in this ballgame, he's battling through this count. He gets the one-two pitch right down the middle clobbers it into the left field bleachers and the Phillies get their second walk off in the past two nights and the Phillies win this ball game by a score of six to three and the whole stadium is electric Whew. I was going crazy right there because throughout this ninth inning I was swearing like a sailor because of the blown save by Hector Neris and I just wanted the Phillies to I wanted the Phillies to come out into this ball game and win it because this was a winnable ball game in the top of the ninth inning. But Hector Neris didn't have his right stuff. He didn't look right on the mound. Couldn't locate much, most of his pitches, and the Mets were getting to him when he had left pitches hanging over the middle of the plate. And that's what happens. Same like what Todd Frazier did. He crushed the ball to give the Mets the lead. But the Phillies backed up Hector Neris. They come into the bottom of the ninth. They tie the game and they win the game in the bottom of the ninth instead of having to force this game to go into extra innings on back-to-back -back days, which is a good thing because I didn't feel like waiting there because it was getting hot, the sun was going to start to hit me, I didn't want that going on whatsoever. <laughs> so, yeah, I decided today to go into the ball game. I couldn't decide on wearing Bryce Harper or Aaron Nola. I made the right choice, and I went with the Aaron Nola pinstripe jersey, and he throws a gem today on the mound, and... Just good feelings all around. The bamboo is still working. The bamboo streak is still alive. Still alive. Whew. Feels good right now. I know previously in the past past week and a half or so, I was really down. It was a really frustrating time for the Phillies. But this four-game series is a really good way to get our swagger back. It's a really good way to get back the way that we know we can play baseball when our offense has timely hits or is scoring a bunch of runs at will and when our bullpen or starting pitching can have a strong outing. Sometimes when the starting pitching doesn't have a good outing, our bullpen will back him up. But today, Aaron Nola had a really strong outing on the mound, and, and a couple of our relievers had strong performances on the mound as well, but Hector Nero sadly comes in and blows the save, so I think he needs a rest or a few there. Because this was his third appearance in the last three days, so I think he does need a little bit of an off day here. So we need the Phillies offense to score a lot of runs so we don't have to force them into the ball game. Just give Hector Neris the day off and rely on other people in the bullpen because our bullpen has been pretty solid these past four games. So going on into the weekend, we have a series against the Miami Marlins who swept us at Citizens Bank Park this previous weekend. So 
let's go into Florida, go into Miami, and beat the crap out of them because they embarrassed us on our home turf. Let's embarrass them in front of the five fans that show up to the ballpark every night. So, really great ball game out of the Phillies. Just just solid performance all around. Sadly, Hector Neres blows that save, but the Phillies managed to back him up, tie the game, win the game in the bottom of the ninth. And good feelings all around. The bamboo streak is still alive, so all hail the bamboo. Everyone go out and buy yourself some bamboo because it's really good luck right now for the Phillies, so it'll be good luck for you. <laughs> So, what are you guys' thoughts on this ball game? What are you guys' thoughts on the Phillies going into Miami? How do you feel about the Gene Segura walk off the Franco tying the ball game? Just don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, boys, and I'll see you in the next one. I am starting to lose my voice and my throat is hurting, so see you guys in the next one.